Legoland Resort. Beautiful place that we're not spending the whole show in. Don't get, uh, don't get excited. Don't get comfortable. Let's go. You will be finding many of those Legoland clips throughout this show because I can help myself. Before we jump into this episode, metaphorically of course I'm glued to this chair, I just want to say a thank you for the response of last episode. Whether it be a response to the Clayton interview, I know Alia, you gave me some great uh, responses about your daughter being very interested, or the two skits, which are easily some of my favorites. <laughs> I was a bit annoyed at the premiere because, you know, no one really spoke during the uh, Adventure Game skit, uh, which means I, I thought at the time that no one was that interested in it, or people didn't think it was that funny. But everybody talked when I was cutting a melon. Peak comedy, apparently! But it, all is forgiven because A, when I put the video out as a separate thing, people showed their love for it. But one of the developers of the Adventure Games actually responded on Twitter about it, saying that they loved it, so... Yeah, again, all is forgiven. <laughs> so, with all that said... Allons-y! It's French. But let's go. Light show! Fan films are incredible. Everybody who makes them gives it the utmost creativity and imagination. And, well, the ones I'm about to mention this week are no different. I don't know what I'm going to say next because I'm filming this well in advance, but you can just bet they're all going to be magnificent. Dalek! Do you remember last week where I forgot to turn the mic on for the fan film segment? Yeah, did it again. <laughs> so obvious too, because there's a green light and oh, whatever. Fan films. Also, I'm going to take this scarf off because it's already far too hot for it. <sighs> Batman March is a name you already know. He's one of the classics. You either know him from his involvement with the Yogg's cast, him chasing around his nephews dressed as a sea devil, or what I'm mentioning today, his eighth Doctor figure adventures. I know he did other Doctors with his figure adventures, but I'm picking my favourite because his 8th Doctor stuff was where it's at! I know I personally harped ideas from him for my uh, project Return of Omega slash uh, The Kraken Time War, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about my rubbish, we're here to talk about his genius! Big bit of thunder, don't know if you heard that. But anyway, sorry, series three of his eighth Doctor figure adventures is what I'm going to be mentioning because it's my favourite. The gods disagree. <laughs> you know, a normal person would close the window, but I'm hot. I'm a bit warm too. <laughs> the sets, mostly uh, action figure theatre, but still used perfectly. Uh, the ambition of the story, the voice acting in particular, his eighth Doctor is terrific. He gets those inflections down perfectly. So if you have not already, Go and give them a watch. Or if you have watched them already, re-watch them. Peak content! Shh! This... No power. But that can only mean that the Time Lords have shut down the Eye of Harmony. What are you doing? Running a full systems check. Yes, yeah, no signs of anything obtrusive within the TARDIS. He's gone. He was saying something about Gallifrey. He was draining the Eye. They must have traced the power drainage from here and decided to shut down the Eye of Harmony. That's madness! Gallifrey would be totally defenceless. But the Master will lose his newfound powers. Vanity. Noun. Excessive pride in or admiration of one's own achievements. So here's something I'm in. Reflection is a Tenth Doctor figure adventure created by Josh Murphy Studios. It's not out yet, it's set for a mid-August release, but a couple of teaser trailers have been released. Here's one of them. Excellent use of music, by the by. Definitely want to check out. I am always very thankful and grateful whenever I'm offered a Doctor part, or really any part, but the ones I always get asked about is uh, my Smith and Tennant, and thank you, whoever is kind enough to let me do that. You know what? I'm sorry. 
that was only two fan films in the fan film segment. It's not on. No, I will not do that to you. That is unfair and cruel to leave you hanging with just a mere two. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create my own fan film just to put for this segment. So here we are, the premiere of my latest fan film project. Take a look. Rose, come quickly. Oh, gladly. Uh, what, what are you doing? You're coming quickly. This is a family show, Rose. Oh, oh what, what, what? And it's cancelled. Moving on. Oh, didn't see you there. <laughs> hey, you! Do you want to make Doctor Who content but don't have the actors, cameras, sets, or budget? Well, welcome to the wonderful world of audio adventures. First one I'm going to mention is a new one that I've come across or was sent, I don't remember. It's the Something Blue Doctor Universe, or timeline or something. Namely, episode one, The Interloper. First thing, if you put the Doctor in a bowler hat, instant classic. Learn that from Luke Lane. Secondly, it's a fun listen. I like the length. I I I've noticed with a lot of uh, other creators, they can always, they always stretch it out quite far, sometimes to good effect, but other times it just feels a bit like padding. This one is a tight 15 minutes. Also, interestingly, it features the Rutans, and they're not really a creature that gets mentioned a lot. I mean, it gets mentioned a lot, but you don't see it a lot, you know what I mean? So, definitely go and check this one out. No. A little late for the good news, isn't it? You are Jackie Mullins. Regional manager of the D Mart outside New Bedford. That's me. What? What of it? Good. Hey, I, I don't know how they do things wherever you're from, but around here we don't just barge into people's. I am from a place beyond your understanding. Wisconsin. Next up is a long-running series of audios titled Doctor Who. Dark Days by Rassilon Productions. This is a creator I have mentioned before, so I feel like it's a good time to say there is no limit to how many times you get mentioned on the community show. If you've got a new project coming out, if you've got loads of fan films, loads of audios, tons of cosplay you want to show off, just send them my way, whether it be in the Discord, Twitter, in the YouTube comments. But anyway, back on track, Rassilon Productions, Dark Days. It crosses many different Doctors with some great impressions in there and Honestly, it's hard for me to say things without spoiling them for you, so go and check them out. Uh, the full playlist will be linked below, as well as any other thing I mention in chronological order! I'm a Time Lord. I control the flow of time. It's called editing. The TARDIS lands in the bleak junkyard, now in a foggier night. The Doctor walks out and has a look around. And of course it's this junkyard. It's been a while now since I was here. Even made this my home at one point. Long time ago now. Oh, and here's something. Here's, here's just a cheeky teaser. Can't always have full audios. You have to have some teasers in there. Teasing you. What am I doing? Josh Carr of the Hulu podcast. You may remember I pimped out his casting call last episode. Well, here comes an actual teaser for the audios. It's got this great uh, purple sort of 80s aesthetic to it. You can't go wrong with those sort of neon poppy designs. He has dubbed it The Peculiar Adventures of Doctor Who, which is a terrific title, if we're being honest. Keep an eye out. It won't be out until 2022, at least. You gotta wait for nice things. You gotta be patient. Now here's one I am excited to mention. Harry Hudson is a good friend of mine and he does Doctor Who music. You may have spotted his epic remixes popping up in YouTube every once in a while and Honestly, they're terrific. <laughs> I have already personally asked him to help me out with Doctor Who Road for some original tracks, which is very exciting. Go and check him out. He is a lovely person. I've known him for years and years and years. Finally in the audio section, Venus Fleet's finally out! Once again I'm involved in this project, but I am still somehow a fanboy of it. Episode 1 and Angel Goes to War... Oh, you know what? Nah, I'm not going to explain it to you. 
because I know someone who can do it way better. Ladies and gentlemen, star and creator of Venus Flint, Joe Eddings. Whilst I wait for Joe, it's still five minutes, she's not late or anything. Uh, this is the second time we, me and her are doing this interview. We did it yesterday. Her internet was not great. Ooh, here's a clip of that. So yeah, doing it again. This time not in cosplay, because uh, it was hat. Hey! hey! I really, really hope that this one works. <laughs> Same. I live in the woods and we just got like decent Wi Fi. Like, yeah. literally just got decent Wi Fi. And it goes out half the time. So. Right. Oh, yeah. Check out this cool thing I can do. Boop. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi. That's a natural way of starting this interview. <laughs> Very natural. <laughs> Venus Flint is what we're talking about today. Episode one. As of yes. recording this, uh, came out uh, a week or so ago. But I want to know, where did the idea come from? I'd go digging for the picture, but I think I've sent it in the Discord. I was uh, about 16 years old, and I saw something on my Pinterest, and I fell in love with the artwork. It just everything about it was just something that I wanted to do for a character. I know it's supposed to be River, okay? I know. I'll just Photoshop your face on it, and it'll be fine. We look up, and it's two years later, and... No, four years later, and it's a series now. Well, that was um, going to be my second question. How long have you been working on, well, at least have had this idea? Well, I mean, of course, I'm 20 now. I just turned 20 in May, and I've had it since I was about 16 years old. So a while. Have, <laughs> yeah, a while. But I've never really thought about doing anything with it. It was mainly just like a little fun thing for me and Luke to kind of toy around with because we were dating at the time as well. And we've been dating a long time. <laughs> About to reach our five-year anniversary this oh, wow. of October. We're getting Congratulations. excited. All I want is stationary. That's literally all I want. If, if, if we ever meet you for your birthday, I'll be sure to bring a protractor or a compass or something. <laughs> nice math set. Oh, I can't do math. I have to use a calculator. Like, to just well, do same it. here. Like, wh why would they I invent the calculator for us not to use it? So you obviously have worked with quite a lot of people to get this project off the ground. Yes. Um, so why don't we take some time to sort of go through some of those names? So we'll start with, uh, of course, the editor. Uh, 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 or, uh, I'll hate him. <laughs> He's going to feel so bad. <laughs> she sorry. hates me. So Luke Flame, my boyfriend, he has done an amazing job editing the series. Um, he has also been, rec he also recommended pretty much the entire cast. Um, I picked a few people like you, Jack. He sent me a video and I was like, if you can bring me Jack Reeves. I swear to God, I'll marry you on the spot. Yeah, because I was just... about six others. Thank you very much. We <laughs> yeah, spoke but they about weren't this. working out. I was not expecting you to agree to it, honestly. I was just like, I was still auditioning people as we were waiting on your answer. Arginia Vastra, Lauren Lee, and Abby Louise, who have been nothing but amazing. Um, yeah. They have delivered in, in more ways than one. And I, I knew from the start that Abby and Lauren were going to get the job done because. <laughs> They've been in so many other things. Yeah. Luke recommended those those two as well. And I was more skeptical, not because I didn't want them on the project, but do I want this rejection? Oh, I <laughs> do see. Do I yeah. want someone to tell me no? <laughs> the, like I said yesterday, the first answer was no. And Luke finally explained it the way it's supposed to be explained. And, <laughs> fi you know, they were kind of more on board with it at that point. Sorry, I blanked. Uh, <laughs> so who else uh, in the cast? Who else you got? Matt. Like, I don't know. Matt plays Strax. <laughs> I love Matt. Is amazing. I don't know like what it is about Matt, but like every time I talk to him, I feel like, I know he's a dad, but like, I feel like he's like dad. He you brings know dad energy. About? I feel like kind of relaxed around him. So like you can like go to him with things. I'm not one of those people that ask for help. I would rather a project crash and burn before I ask for help than right. ask for help. But Matt just like makes it to where I feel like I'm not being judged. <laughs> um, in a world where you're constantly being judged, especially in, this, in the business that you and I are in. Everyone's a critic <laughs> as they say. Yeah, for real. I, I don't know, Matt just doesn't seem very judgmental at all. And I love him to death. And he plays an awesome Strax. And I know he's he got does. lots of love from everybody who's watched the first episode so far. Well, the first time I spoke to you was obviously the uh, first read through because I was being a little bad 
good. And I was like, oh, I don't need to do like read throughs or rehearsals. Can I, just I could send just you send my the line. Yeah, that was the first time I had met you, but that was also in the same call, and I will never for- uh, forgive you, where you had Simon Fisher Becker and you didn't tell me. That is someone who has worked with the actual Matt Smith and uh, Jacob Dudman, a renowned 11th Doctor impressionist. And then there's see, me. See, the plan was that we weren't going to tell any of the cast. You came in and introduced you to everybody and we started the read through and then Simon Fisher Becker just left. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, well, didn't he have a power he cut? Oh, he had a power cut. I heard somebody go, hey, dude's gone. And we're like, <laughs> like I went on the script, I went, what the fuck? And then I go up to get like a Diet Coke or something. And I just hear Jack out, just like at the end of my dorm room. So, so when were you gonna tell me that Simon Fisher Becker was gonna be here? <laughs> I was so, <laughs> irrationally mad oh, man. luckily i had my webcam off i don't think i had a webcam at that point so you guys couldn't see what i was doing but i was genuinely when i joined it or when he joined i was like yeah i muted myself I went jen they've got dorium that was a funny read through though it was hilarious it was so i'm getting to know you funny. it was so um the the battle of what the fuck is this <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I do, because obviously I hadn't properly read the script up until that point. I had skimmed it, or maybe I ignored it, Yeah. because uh, I do that. And um, so I was getting through it, I was like, so uh, we're going to go to the battle of what the f- And then um, you like sent us your lines and you got it right like the first time you said it, and then you went back and said it wrong the second time. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. <laughs> no, the only other, the one other funny one I remember is um, the old fat blue line. Um, yes, so Dorian and like, says I have it, to know. and it was my line directly afterwards. So I took the opportunity and went, "Rit, are you offended by that?" He's like, "It was Matt's favorite line." <laughs> it was. It was Matt's favorite. Before I move on to the next bit, the one bit uh, member of the team that we didn't mention that I want to is uh, our, your resident composer, James York the godsend that he is, mm. is, I mean, he's done fabulous things, Nightmare Museum. He's done so many fabulous things and I've just been honored to work with him and that he's, you know, doing the music and he did just such a fabulous job with the time that he was given. Yeah, it was short notice, <laughs> I can say that. Basically ended with us getting the finished edit to James and he worked that whole day, finished it, uh, at around one o'clock. So how'd the cast premiere go? Hmm. Because we were having fun. Um, we were dressed as Donna Noble from Fires of Pompeii and uh, having a having a rough old time. Because I was mm. <laughs> um, panicking because it wasn't uploading. And then we took Luke's laptop, drove to a Starbucks. That Starbucks Wi-Fi was shitty too. So we put it on my like mobile hotspot. We got it to where it was up loading because we finally just like left the Starbucks and then we moved it over to Luke's house finally finished uploading I left my phone in there so I could you know he could keep it in range I was doing my makeup and all of a sudden Luke just goes have you not verified your account yet and I walk in there I'm like that was your you know responsibility you're the one who set this whole thing up Mm -hmm. and he was like no and i was like you set this up like literally two years ago like just go get on the zoom get everybody ready i'll fix it couldn't fix it had to share the screen uh share our screen for the rest of the cast which was kind of sucky because luke's speakers are terrible on his on his computer luckily i think it just used the computer's audio because it was good quality and that's it, it actually didn't sound too bad but you know who did sound bad Shrek sounded bad on the speakers. Did he? You couldn't understand a single. F- if I did not write the script, I would have not known what the man was saying. Pull him out because he was watching like the epic version of like the Doctor Who theme. Been a while ago. I, it, it may not even be what he was listening to. I, he may have just poured water on him directly on it. Like there you go, water in the plants. It's thirsty. <laughs> did you ever do that as a kid? Like just pour water on random sh- and say it was thirsty, or was that just me? Um, quite possibly just you. Two. Uh, uh, two more questions to go. We're doing well. It hasn't roboted yet. This is good. How would you rate your British accent out of ten? Four. Talking to a Brit- Four. Really? Why so low? Because I feel like I could do it better. I know it's pretty decent, but I feel like 
especially when I'm recording long scripts, like I recorded um, Angel, I can kind of lose the pitch and I can lose the um, accent from time to time. Right. Um, I know that um, Abby brought this up one time that I say, I still say can't and not can't, you know? So, Careful with that uh, one. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I mean, I've had people say it's believable, but I don't think I could go on a London street and make somebody think that I'm actually yeah there. i mean i suppose it's a good thing that almost the entirety of the rest of the cast is british so you just you, you might be able to take it all in through osmosis i'm really hoping that i can record like the next read through that like we're all together that'd be fun and i may just like bring you in because if you want to like be in the read through if you're not like in the script or anything you can just show up like honestly. yeah might as well like, i can read the how, stage that's, directions that's why torchwood was there the last time that's why torchwood was there i'll it's just read the one. stage directions as uh, as, uh, as matt smith okay. so scene one yeah <laughs> luke you're fired you're gonna get the stage <laughs> <directions> <laughs> last thing i want to mention we uh, we brought it up the last time we tried to do this interview yesterday so you being uh, and correct me if i'm wrong a woman uh, can get treated very strangely. You think so? Good, good. I think I might be. <laughs> you just people such as yourself get treated differently online to such as myself. I just want to, men to bring up the point of when you're talking to really anyone online, you just think about what you're saying because younger boys, I noticed especially, just have a very creepy way of talking to. Uh, women on the internet uh, we can't i am very protective over my friends my cast i am the first on the fence so whenever i figured out that that was going on i got rather upset <laughs> and i just became more wary of the group of people that do this kind of thing which like you said is mainly younger guys you know younger kids who don't really see a problem with it some of the things i've heard i'm, I'm not going to name names on either side but mm -hmm. some of the things that i've heard uh, through a few mutuals just uh, the, the questions that can be asked are so direct and so inherently creepy that it's just almost surprising that they themselves don't realize what they're doing half the time. When they get to a certain age, they do realize that it can be seen as creepy. I just don't think they care. But, like I've had creepy dudes like come in and be like, comment on like shit that you don't need to be commenting on. It's not as bad as what some of the people that I know have experienced. Not just like, like you said, just watch what you say. Like it's, yeah, we understand that as creators, we're putting ourselves out there. TikTok, YouTube, anything like that. We are putting ourselves out there. We understand that that does not give you the right to sexualize us like that or anybody. Yeah. I don't care if it's a man, woman, you know, non-binary. I don't care. You have no right, even if it's on the internet, even if it's out there to sexualize someone like that, because we're not doing it for your pleasure. I don't put on makeup because I, I feel like I need to look good for other people. I put on makeup because I like doing it. It yeah. relieves my anxiety. Well, I mean, like, I know I've posted pictures in the Discord of me covered in stage dirt, of me covered in So blood. much blood. So much blood. <laughs> so much blood. <laughs> I remember this one time we, I was literally covered head to toe in blood. I had to go to my theater. So I, I like doing that kind of stuff. So don't sit there and think that it's for you or for anybody that we're dressed up. We can dress up and do whatever we want and look good while we're doing, like making the art that we're making, but don't sexualize it. Yeah. So no rule 34 is a Venus Clint. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if I ever see that, like genuinely, quit. I'll, I'll, Straight I'll up, I quit. <laughs> I quit. No, me and you quit. <laughs> we're done. Thank you for sitting down. Uh, again, Venus Flint, episode one, An Angel Goes to War, is out now. It recently crossed 300 views, which is excellent. Uh, and keep an eye out for Blood Feud, who, who, which will be premiering this October. Exciting stuff. Make sure you subscribe to that uh, channel linked down below. And thank you again, Joe, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Joe and Luke are terrific. I've known them for a few months and they're already two of my bestest friends. Uh, so go and support Venus Flint and any other endeavours the pair of them get up to because they're lovely, creative, brilliant people. And thank you again for casting me as your Resident Eleven. It's a honour. I'm here at NASA. This is where aliens live. This is true, this is a true story. Hang on a minute. Why am I here? Why am I not home? Let's go to home. It's episode four. I, I have to keep wearing it in some capacity. Otherwise, I'll get arrested by the Whovian police. Oi! 
You keep that scarf on. You do not disrespect Thomas Booker. Or else. Okay, I'm sorry, I've done it, Becca! Valentina on Twitter. I think might be a Peter Capaldi fan. I mean, every other post is her drawing Peter Capaldi, so I you kind of have to assume after a while. But I mean, if you're drawing one of the most attractive doctors, you're gonna get some amazing art out of it. Yeah, I said it. Specifically, I want to show off this piece. It's beautiful. It's so whimsical, isn't it? As a fan of Doctor Who series five in particular, I love the fairy tale-ness. Uh, to Doctor Who. It, it, fairy tale and Doctor Who weirdly go together so well, and this, I've got it on my phone, this, this, it's gorgeous. Also, if you are a fan of the new Suicide Squad movie that's either coming out or is out, Peter Capaldi's in it, isn't he? And let me just tell you, she knows it! There's a plane that just won't shut up. Quite frankly, Rude. If you're like me, you are a fan of Dalek Universe, the Big Finish audio series starring David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor. I love it. I personally prefer Dalek Universe 1, but, but preferences aside, I'm sure you've watched Dalek Universe's 2's trailer. That came out weird. <laughs> the Dalek Universe 2 trailer. And if you did, you might want to know who's behind it. It is a chap by the name of Oliver Chinnery. I mean, yes, it's a callback to uh, the 50th anniversary trailer, which is great. He even mentioned that in a tweet of his, that that was on purpose, and that's great to know. But putting aside the inspiration for it, on its own, it looks amazing. So, credit to Oliver Chinnery for his terrific work. Next is Ben Jewer VFX. Fairly confident that's your name? I'm gonna call you Ben. Him and the lovely TARDIS man, or Aiden, have created this piece, inspired by the parting of the ways. Which, if we're being honest, it's the best regeneration story. If you disagree, that's fine. It's okay to be wrong. But, sorry, the art. <laughs> the It's beautiful. What, what more is there to say? Go and give him a follow. His CG Daleks are... Ah. Before I mention what this person does, or why I'm featuring them, I just want to mention Caroline, or I, or, what the fuck, I don't know how to say that. Your uh, Twitter banner, it's perfect. Let us dance. I don't know how to dance. But aside from Twitter banner bants, I want to mention this Hartnell piece. I'll admit to not being the biggest fan of the Hartnell era, I mean I like him in the role, but the era, I don't know, it's just not for me. But this art piece, this art piece that I can put up here, I don't know why I'm trying to show you with my phone, is gorgeous. The composition, uh, the colorization, it's terrific. Plus, I mean, I don't know what it is about the Daleks. Uh, they're such a weird design, but they're instantly iconic and just beautiful to look at, despite being some of the weirdest creations in uh, British television history. <laughs> but there is more where that came from, right, uh, ranging from Whittaker, Pertwee and others, so go and give her a follow. Super talented. Too talented. Someone Hooven Hoovian police, arrest her. Caroline, you're under arrest. For being too cool. You know what? Twitter, move aside, Instagram time, thank you. Yeah, you can tell what uh, social medias I use more, or understand how to use more. I don't understand stories, I'm sorry. Last week I had that bizarre uh, manic episode, also known as the Lego bonus round, or whatever I called it. And I missed one out. Oops. <laughs> the minifig who does loads of these little uh, Doctor Who uh, Lego sets, but one I'm going to be mentioning in particular, the one I first saw and most enjoyed, is the eighth Doctor minifig with his TARDIS. I mean, despite the scale and the limitation of just using the blocks, they really capture the uh, TV movie TARDIS, which is one of my favourite exteriors, just saying. Uh, anyway, go and check him out. I know he did an Evil of the Daleks, uh, 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 Emperor. <laughs> Lastly, we're heading back to Twitter for Andy Drews. He's got an ongoing project, which is recreating Doctor Who baddies with Photoshop. And I must say, he's been doing a terrific job. Also, again, I mentioned that I'm not the biggest Hartnell fan. That sort of spans Troughton a bit, but less so. I like Troughton more than Hartnell. Preferences aside. I love seeing all these weird creatures. Some of them I don't think I've even seen before. Like, what the hell? is that one in the middle. Like, what is that? Well, I know there's a quark there, and I think that's Alpha Centauri. What's in the middle of them? 
What's that? <laughs> that ends the art segment, so once again, I have to free myself from the mirror domain. I can do this. I can do this. <sighs> the Doctor is under attack by merchandise. Oh no, it's the Mox of Balhoon. Hey, that's our words. Uh, sorry. Ah, get pranked. I don't give a fuck. Look out, it's the Daleks. Exterminate plastic. Pure plastic. Bagger, self-destruct. The Doctor is joined by his faithful companions. I'm Rose and I like chips. Wait, that's Bill. You did it first, I did! Go me! I'm Ace and, well, my name describes me perfectly. And I'm tired. So very tired. Get in here before I chop my boot at you. And they're healed ones. They're always healed. Oh my giddy out. Where's Jamie when you need him? He doesn't have a figure. At least I still have Victoria. No, you don't. Zoe? Nope. Rah! Oh, remember Tooth and Claw? Get to the TARDIS. Where it? Yeah. Action figures and empty bank accounts. From character. Hello. I'm everyone's favourite character. Grandma Connolly. <laughs> Are you not having fun, Gemma? Look at the fun we're having. We. Oh, it was a video. Yeah, <laughs> cosplays. Last week, I feel I made you all very uncomfortable with how deeply attractive I was as Amy Pond. So I thought I'd balance that out with a woman who can do Amy Pond significantly better than I. That is a cosplayer by the name of Daisy Sway. In the same way that Aiden has sort of focused in on uh, the Eleventh Doctor, like getting all the different variants. Daisy Sway has done that with Amy Pond. In fact, I think I mentioned last episode how much of a, uh, a fashion icon Amy Pond is, and just be flicking through her Instagram is proof of that. She does other cosplays too, by the way. It's not just Amy, but that seems to be the focus. I know she does, um, where is it? Yeah, Clara. There's Clara there. I don't want to just make it seem like she does the one thing. She does other things too. <laughs> Jeff Keep, when I saw your Hartnell cosplay, I thought, David Bradley, move aside, yeah? <laughs> I use hyperbole, of course, but just look. Look at that. That is terrific Hartnell cosplay, isn't it? Also, shout out to your username on Twitter, Beef Dad. What does that mean, Jeff? I have needed to talk about <laughs> Bohemian Time Lord. And how fitting I mentioned this on the Tom Baker episode because his Tom Baker costume and impression are spot on. I've just read this book called Doctor Who and the Brain of Morbius. I've never heard of Doctor Who. I'm the Doctor, and I fought the brain of Morbius. Well, in fact, I fought Morbius, and also his brain. <laughs> and it's written by Terence Dix. Who's Terence Dix? I think he knows something about me, you know? John Colshaw, you can take a break for a minute because we've got a good stand-in for the stand-in. He posts these little videos every once in a while of him just sort of nattering on and... I love them. I love them so much. <laughs> Definitely go and give Bohemian Time Lord a follow. He's one of my favourite cosplayers, if I'm being perfectly honest. I know, I, I keep saying I shouldn't pick favourites, but then I pick favourites. I don't know why. It's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th Doctor. Comedy. One question before we move on, and I'm gonna put this in the Discord at some point too, probably before this has gone out. If you were to change one thing about the show, what would it be? And I don't mean Doctor Who, I mean this show, the community show. Don't say the host. <laughs> or do, maybe I'm the problem. But I feel like I'm missing something. I, I can't tell what that is. I don't know, maybe you can all tell me. If there is, if there is one thing you would change or even add, to this show, what would it be? Moving on, other shout outs. I keep coming across weird, weird Twitter accounts that are just so specific. Last week I mentioned the lovely Gruntly the Ogron. I love him. <laughs> he was even in character in the DMs too, which was weird but also hilarious and I love it. But this week I am mentioning Made Strax. Before I show a picture, think about it. Made Strax. Now here's the premise. Essentially the idea is, this picture of Strax, dressed up as a maid, you, you're with me so far, you, you take that image, and you put that image in every single Doctor Who episode. And there you have it, that's the Twitter account of Daily Maid Strax. It shouldn't be as funny as it is. 
I don't know why it's funny. I need to get Matt, who did um, the, the voice of Strax in uh, Venus Flint, to, to like narrate something over those because they're so funny. <laughs> Hello, human scum. I'm the doctor, as you can tell from my fabulous hair in my head. Geronimo, etc. Now, would you happen to have any grenades? They wish to murder James Corden. Here's one that surprised me. I thought Command Moose was the only one making a Doctor Who fan game. Nope. I found the YouTube channel The Kiwi Kingdom and they're making a Doctor Who free roam game. There's a whole playlist I'm going to be linking of a bunch of things they're working on. There's also there's the Pandorica, Defense Drones, there's tons of cool stuff on here. So go and check it out, go and subscribe, watch the uh, progress. It's uh, yet another one to watch. As someone who is sort of priced out when it comes to the Doctor Who official games, you know, um, your, your VR one, for example, it, it, it's nice to have these ones to keep an eye on. It, it, I don't know. It's fun. Finally, we have Mario Bowser with a video he is very proud of where he reviews every single first Doctor episode. It's very kindly dedicated to the late Jackie Lane, who played Dodo, and yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it is fairly long, but if you're interested in the review style content, definitely go and check it out. Is it in the set of City of Death? A bit smaller in person. This is one of the many quarries used in Doctor Who. I think about 500 episodes were filmed here in the specific area. Ah, history. This is a rare sight. Someone's attacking Tower Bridge. So, Big Ben, made popular by a spaceship crashing into it for bands. I don't have a joke for that, that's just, that's just adorable. Genuinely incredible. Incredible craftsmanship. Oh, and a gym. Canary Wharf it is much less uh, Daleks inside Men in the Sky, happy to report. Thank goodness. Apparently there used to be a Dalek up there. Not anymore. Also no TARDIS, unfortunately. We couldn't find one. It used to be though. Oh, he's still attacking. It's fine. Oh, that's a shame. Still. Incredible. We're up here in the sky. Down below. Imagine if I dropped my phone. The comedy that would ensue. <laughs> what? I refer you to my previous point. Look at the craftsmanship on that. I've been thinking of more ways to get the community involved in the show. It's kind of in the name. <laughs> I think I figured out a way though in the form of a new segment that will be starting next episode. I haven't got a name for it yet, but here's the premise. I would like you at home to film yourself shouting out someone or something in the community that you love. This can be a cosplayer, a, a fan film, an audio adventure, anything. And I will compile all of these shout outs into its own segment. It will feature both your name uh, for your own publicity and of course the person you are shouting out and it's just more ways to get you guys involved and to shout out more names that I might not necessarily come across. This is open to everyone and I'm hoping to feature as many people as possible. To be in for a chance of being in the next episode of the community show, before we get on to how you get involved, here are the ground rules. It can only be a maximum of one minute long, because then if I get too many, obviously, then it would just, the whole show would be that, and that wouldn't be fair on the rest of the show. Also, if possible, no profanity. Don't get me wrong, I'll bleep out a swear if it comes out, but, you know, let's try and keep it relatively family friendly. And really, that's it when it comes to the rules. Again, this is a new segment, it's a learning experience for me and for you. But again, I'm just, I just want to get you guys more involved in the show. Film yourself doing the segment and upload it either to Google Drive or to YouTube Unlisted. You then need to email that YouTube or Google Drive link to this email address. And also include yourself in that email, whether it just be your name or your Twitter handle or YouTube name or what have you so I can find you as well. So if you want to get featured in episode 5 of Doctor Who The Community Show, this is your chance! And if it goes well, this will be an ongoing segment, so... Let's do it. Let's make it a big thing. And with that, it wraps up another episode of The Community Show. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you go and seek out these uh, projects and people that I have mentioned. Really, that's the whole point of this show. I just want to boost up 
everybody else. <laughs> the community at large can be a sad place, an angry place, a discriminatory place. It shouldn't be that. Much like every other community, it needs to be a place where everybody is equal, where everybody is included, and that's what I want to do with the show. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in episode five. Oh, and hey, Chibnall and Whitaker are leaving. Yeah.